No, I've spent a lot of time really trying to explain to people who I am now. Okay. Because I'm introducing yes. yourself. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. How, we, how do you do that? Now? That would be, a, we need to have like when a woman hits that one year mark where she hasn't have, had a period, we need to have like a reintroduction party. Like where women, like a coming out party. We're like, this yes. is the new version. And of should me. that be your 50s? Yeah. Because I, I could do that. Uh, the average age for women to go through menopause is like 49, 50. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you're saying once you feel like a new self has yeah. emerged, yeah. then really acquaint yourself with that self. Yeah, and own it. Own it. And then how do you tell people about this new version of you when they feel like, I don't recognize who you are? Yeah, you know, I can only say the way I've said it to people is like, um, I've been doing a lot of work on myself, is what I say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've been in therapy. I've been diving deep into who I am and how I want to show up. And so I'm different. Mm -hmm. And you might find me different, mm -hmm. but that's a good thing because yeah. I've been working personally on myself. I did this with my daughter who's 24 now. When she came back from college at about 21, 22, um, I actually asked her to relook at me. And I was like, I want you to understand that in the time you've been gone, I've been going, I've had a hormonal change. I've been working on myself. And so some of the old ways that you looked at me, you might not find me that way anymore. So I'm going to ask that you actually don't bring the past into this and you look at me with fresh eyes. Uh, Brilliant. It's recording. Okay. Hi, Dr. Mindy. Hello. I'm so excited to have you on. It's such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. We are all going through midlife changes. We uh, feel like not enough attention has been paid to women's health in general, but especially the changes that come with this phase of life. Yeah. Um, I was hoping you'd be able to tell us a little bit about menopause and perimenopause and what to expect. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you have like five hours? <laughs> That's a really loaded question. Um, let me start with this thought. Um, I just want women to know that most women don't understand what's going on. So the, and, and most doctors don't understand what's going on. So the first thing, if you're lost, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. If you're confused, you don't know why your body's doing what it's doing. There's actually a biological reason for it. Uh, one of the, the statistics that motivates me is that uh, the most common time for a woman to commit suicide is from 45 to 55. And I largely feel that's because she doesn't get what's going on with the hormonal changes that are happening in her body. So with that in mind, I just want, for me, every woman needs to be seen and heard and understand it's not. But, but an individual, it's not, it's not us individually. Yeah. So what typically happens in about 35 is the first hormone to decline is progesterone. Mm -hmm. uh, progesterone is that hormone that has allowed our uterine lining to shed. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten a ton of progesterone the week before our periods, you know, ever since we've been cycling. Mm -hmm. And now it, to, uh, progesterone is going down. Right. The challenge with that is that progesterone stimulates another neurotransmitter <laughs> called GABA. And GABA calms us. So with progesterone goes GABA. And all of a sudden, irritability goes up. So the first thing I want to say is that much of the attention that happens in the news is that hot flashes are a menopausal issue. But actually, mm -hmm. the number one uh, symptom for menopause is irritability. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're feeling irritable, you're short-tempered, that's because you're losing these two neurochemicals. Yeah. Then somewhere around 40, estrogen goes on a wild ride. So she's up, she's down, she's up, she's down. I can tell you as like a curly-haired woman, I, in my 40s, it was like sometimes my hair was curly, sometimes it was flat, sometimes I had moisture on my skin, sometimes I didn't because yeah. it, estrogen is doing that thing where it just goes up and down for about a decade. And in that decade, the thing we have to remember is that estrogen brings a whole set of neurochemicals with her. Estrogen stimulates serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, uh, um, uh, BDNF, oxytocin, glutamate. These are chemicals that let your brain function normally. Mm -hmm. So That regulate our moods. That's right. Regulate our moods, help us think straight. Mm -hmm. So if we put those all together... Just those two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and all those neurochemicals, 
there is a massive shift that is happening inside of you. Right. And so because of that, all I mean, what I heard in my clinic so much was women that were like, I have an amazing life. I have an amazing husband. I'm in Silicon Valley you know, in California. We're like a lot of wealth. And women were like, I'm, I don't, on paper, everything looks amazing, but I am so depressed. I walk around in a haze all day. I have brain fog. I'm gaining weight left and right. I'm so depressed. I, I'm so anxious. I can't sleep. All of that is part, I don't want to say it's part of the process, but it's what can happen in this transition. Wow. So I think the first thing is to understand, I call it the neurochemical armor. Mm -hmm. There's like a neurochemical armor that's coming down as you transition from a woman who had a cycle to a woman who doesn't have a cycle. And that transition takes about 10 years. So, you know, usually when I tell people this, they're like, well, that's a long time. <laughs> a long time to be out of my mind. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And the worst thing I feel like is I don't recognize myself. Yeah, me neither. Anymore. Yeah, thank you. I just feel like every day you wake up and I'm trying to go off of what I was in my yeah. 30s and in my 20s. Yeah. And I don't have that anymore. Right. And all the women that I look to, like I, I'm fortunate enough, I have six year olds, seven year olds, and one of my closest friends is 105. Wow! <laughs> I want to have a 105 year old friend. Is it a woman? That's, yes. Oh That's my god! Sweetest, sweetest woman. And but I find that generation of women didn't knew less about yeah. their bodies. Yeah. Um, didn't really have the awareness around self care and the important to yes. it. I mean she was, she was a World War Two survivor. Wow. So she's great at keeping me grounded. Yeah. But in terms of and she she was really lucky because she danced till she was eighty eight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she does have all the all that knowledge to share. But in terms of understanding of our hormones or what I'm talking yeah. about, uh, when I go to them, they don't really know any of that. Yeah. Um can we talk a little bit about the loss of self that women feel at this stage. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking that. I think these are the conversations that we have to bring to the surface mm -hmm. because hopefully somebody who will hear this interview may be alone mm -hmm. and doesn't understand that we've got a, situ a, a hormonal depletion. So mm -hmm. what I always say is there's been a cultural hush about menopause. Yeah. There's actually a cultural hush around women's hormones in general. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about their period. We don't want to talk about the loss of, of our, our cycle going away. We definitely don't want to know that you're going crazy at 48 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so that we haven't created a culture that allows us to talk about that. Yeah. There's That's, a shame. I so there's shame. Yeah. So I think the first thing is talk about it. Talk yeah. about it. I, what I'm trying to do is be more vocal and open up the conversation yeah. so that more women feel safe to talk about it. Yeah. There are, you know, I've read some statistics that like even in the workplace, women aren't feeling safe to talk about, like they're sitting in a meeting and all of a sudden they have a hot flash and they're embarrassed by it. Yeah. I mean that like men don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Or all of a sudden you're in like, I've had like for me personally, I've been in multiple interviews like this where all of a sudden in my perimenopausal years, it was like thoughts just stopped. Okay. Yes. And it was like, whoa, is that brain fog? Yeah. Every, yes. Uh, forgetfulness. Yes. Yes. All of that. Yes. But I think it's really hard to tell us that because um, I'm noticing that our workforce is getting younger and younger and younger. And so I think it's going to be really hard convincing women to be vulnerable about that. I remember when I became a mom and even that, we were, we were all our generation of women who became moms in the office were pretending nothing happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. So yeah. I, I doubt that we will feel confident enough now unless something shifts massively in the culture. Right. Um, how do we bring about this type of change? Yeah, it's such a good point. So for starters, we need to support each other in it as women. Mm -hmm. So we can talk to our coworker about it. We, yeah. can, we can talk, like, just get it out of your mouth and explain what's going on in a loving way. We don't want to be victims to it. We're just, this is what's going on with us. It's a biological fact. So I think the first thing is for us to come together. Mm -hmm. um, second thing is to understand what's going on, like yeah. really dive into books and, uh, you know, podcasts and articles and YouTube. I mean, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm a, I've been on all platforms from 
writing books to YouTube to uh, my podcast. So even what you just said, the way you broke down the different hormones that are being depleted. And it helps us to actually not internalize and personalize that. You're a proponent of women understanding their menstrual cycles. You say that it can help benefit relationships, it can yeah. help benefit our work life. If we know when we're at our most productive and when we need to slow down. That's right. That's right. So, um, uh, you know, a, a little backstory on how I stumbled into this is that I started to see that many of my patients, myself, as we were getting into those 40 year old years, mm -hmm. that there were like unexplainable things just showing up. And, you know, for me, and you said it earlier in this interview, for me, it, there was like, I felt like someone had hijacked my brain. I felt like I had days where I had so much energy and days where I was incredibly fatigued. And so the, that chaos actually needs to be discussed first so that we can come together and actually support each other. Yeah. So we, and then the other piece of this that I think and why I'm so adamant about teaching hormones is women have to understand themselves first. Mm -hmm. So what I have found in putting all the books out that I put out is that A, women don't understand their own menstrual cycles. So they can't articulate to the men around them or the other people around them what's going on. Mm -hmm. So um, what the, just the other day, I had a friend who is 43 and she called me and she's like, I think I just had my first menopausal rage. And I was like, oh, tell me about it. What happened? And she goes, my husband, I kept asking him what he wanted for his birthday, what he wanted for his birthday at the last minute. And he said, I want to have some friends over for, for my birthday. And it was like days away. And she wanted to put, you know, her best foot forward. And she's like, I lost it on him. I literally just started crying. I was upset. So she's done everything she can to pre-plan and get it. That's right. And it's like right. something. It's almost, do you feel like? Oh, we've become like toddlers. Yeah, we our tolerance for stress is less for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I'll explain why here in a moment because I think what I want pe the people to understand is there's a reason this is all happening. Mm -hmm. But to to finish your point about what do we do in opening up the conversation in the workplace and with men mm -hmm. is what I told my friend when she got done like with this day of crying is I explained to her why she was crying because A, she didn't understand. She was like, what? I don't understand what happened to me. And then I said, you need to go back and explain to your husband, you know, I'm hormonally feeling different, bear with me. And I think men need to have some compassion for the understanding of the changes that we're going through. Yeah. But if we don't vocalize it, if we don't try to understand them ourselves, mm -hmm. then it, we just sit in silence. And that's how you see that number of 45 to 55 being the most common time a woman commits suicide. So you just feel so isolated and like nobody yeah. understands yeah. her. You say that men should understand their women's cycle and, you know, know when to avoid and when to lean in yeah. and have a conversation and fix things. Yeah. But most men will tell you, if I even reference yeah, yeah. Agreed. your period, yeah. That's asking to die. <laughs> oh my God. I think that's such a beautiful comment because I have had, and when I first started publicly explaining this, I had more men go, well, you said it, not me. <laughs> so and I was like, well, we all, you know, so, so yes, to the women listening, we need to think of the conversation around hormones as we need to open it up and start talking about it mm -hmm. and talk about it in a loving way. Mm -hmm. When we get really critical and we point our fingers, this is why I told my friend, I was like, you need to go back to your husband and you need mm -hmm. to say, I'm really sorry. I must have hit another level of perimenopause that I don't know about mm -hmm. so that we create a, an opening and dialogue. Other things we can do to help ourselves in this stage of life. Yeah. So um, the big picture here, because what I've heard, I'm, I'm 54 and I'm on the backside of it. <laughs> so you've, you've come through it. I've come through it. Oh my God. And you I'm say looking... that once you've come through it, there's a new person that emerges. You got it. That gives us so much hope. You'll get over it. <laughs> um, no, that's why I'm, it's really important. It, it's a long process of hormonal change. But what's happening to your body? And one of the things that's happening to your body is actually happening more to your brain. Mm -hmm. As this neurochemical armor comes off, mm -hmm. what's happening is there's certain neurons in your brain that are peeling, pruning away. Neurons that you don't need anymore. Neurons that care about what other people think about. Neurons that have caused you to put everybody's needs ahead of your own. 
those are going away. Oh my God. Thank you. I wish right. they went away earlier. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I knew like that in my dress. Right, right. I know. But so now they're going. They're that going explains away. Explains why I, I don't care. You so got much. it. So all of a sudden you don't care as much. You speak your truth. That's why I call it an armor. The neurochemical armor is, is coming down. And all of a sudden stuff is coming out of your mouth that you probably wanted to say at 20. But now you're like, I'm just going to say it. And people around you are like, who are you? You used to be sweet and quiet. And now you're like, have all this yeah. and confidence. That's right. Um, I had a man on who says that actually what happens is a lot of men become empathetic as they age and then women become self-confident. I was yeah. asking him, is it because we spend decades just caring about everyone else that we just can't take it anymore? Our bodies can't take it. Yeah. It's just what right. did he say? And he said he thinks that might have a point to it, but he just thinks women men become so tired of wearing that masculine mask. Yes. And they just Yay. To let it go. Yay. And women become so tired of having to put everybody's needs ahead of their own, that we need to let that go. Yeah. And I don't know anything about, they call it andropause, what men go through and what the brain changes are. But what I will tell you is when you get on the other side of menopause, the brain changes that happen is the neurons go away that make you care about what everybody thinks of, thinks of you. The part of your brain, the amygdala, that was the area of fight or flight, it actually goes from like looking at everything as a threat to actually the same kind of thing that man would say it goes to empathy, mm -hmm. where now the brain is actually more empathetic. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the postmenopausal woman. I don't know if I can swear here, but the post <laughs> <laughs> the postmenopausal woman doesn't give a fuck anymore. And she is way more empathetic to the societal cultural needs. I call it cultural you're leadership. What's happening yeah. to me? Yes. So all of this chaos that you're going through is a brain change and it's a body change. And all of that is heading you to somewhere where you're going to stand in the best version of you if you work with it. So don't like I have this friend I was telling you about. She's like, don't tell me it's going to take 10 years. I'm like, no, it, you go, we're going to stop the suffering so that when you are 53, you are the best version of yourself yet because your well, brain we can embrace it yes. now because it's a change yes. that we know is leading somewhere as opposed to how it was Thank always you. framed which is oh you get to that um actually one of the reasons why I, uh, this platform is called prime okay is because do you remember when in the headlines uh john lemon and a few people were caught out saying you know a woman is in her prime yeah. when she's in her 30s maybe 40s but definitely Ooh. not in her 50s wow actually and we are in our prime in our 50s that's if exactly. you look at the brain changes we are, are we are like We're our best into our own. that's right bingo yeah exactly oh my god so, i thought i thought there wouldn't it, be it, any any it, proof for it but you're giving me scientific yeah. evidence it's, it's and so think about this my what i'd like every woman this is what the menopause reset was about it was a manual on the on five lifestyle changes you make at 40 to help navigate this crazy bumps that are going to happen. And then from there, you can come into these postmenopausal years with health, with vitality, and the culture needs you. The culture needs you. The culture Your needs you. Yeah. So one of the things that I've been really talking about lately that has really been frustrating me is that um, as women, we are forced to like, change how we look as we age because we don't want to be judged for wrinkles yes. and because wrinkles that society tosses you aside when you look old yeah. but actually when you look at if you were to go inside our brain we are the best version of ourselves you shouldn't use the changes in our skin to determine what's going on in our brain yeah. and you can and you see this when you look at women who step into leadership positions when they age like some of them are are incredible, con make incredible contributions to society. They Why has society not caught up to that fact though? Yeah. Because I find when I take off my makeup and I take off the hair and I try to show women the real side of me that I am aging, mm -hmm. I was saying to her earlier that actually as a black woman, there's, you were told in your 30s and 20s, oh, but you know, black don't cry. Right. And I said, that's so harmful. Now I'm, in my right. 40s. Yes. I'm thinking I need two layers of makeup right. just to infuse some that's right. of that. Yeah. And so I always show people the difference. I'll yeah. go and do an Instagram story. And there are some women who keep that version. I That's find, too, who point out, oh my God, I thought you definitely didn't have any wrinkles. And I know, uh, and yeah. some love it. Yeah. And I wonder what is it 
for the women who hate seeing the physical signs of aging or even men. Yeah, I mean, I think I think none of us really love the physical signs of aging. I mean, I, I can tell you I've always been somebody who's been into fitness and, and nutrition and it's been startling some days where I'm like, really, we're going here now, buddy? <laughs> like, we're really going to do this now? Um, but what I've learned is a process of loving myself through the whole experience and to be curious about what my body's doing, to not try to stop it, to not try to villainize it. I'll give, I'll give you an example. Uh, at the height, about 45, when I was really stressed about the changes that were happening in my body, it was about the time I wrote The Menopause Reset. And because I was figuring out all the puzzle pieces. And one morning after several days of my brain, just not feeling like everything, I, I always call it raw, like your brain feels raw, like a stressor hits it. And you're like, ah, oh, I can't, my brain can't handle that. Mm. I was sitting, Maybe I need to sleep it all. Yeah. I was sitting in meditation and I had this thought like, you know, what's really interesting is my ovaries are going into retirement. That's what's happening. And this part, these two organs in my body have been showing up for me every single day or every single month. They've been giving me an egg every single month. And two of those eggs at one point became fertilized and gave me two amazing, beautiful children that I get to love on now. How could I be mad at my body? My body is amazing. Life into the world. It brought life into the world. It's given me all these neurotransmitters. And so it, there was this like aha moment where I just decided – I'm going to stop hating my body. I'm going to start lining myself up with these changes. And I think as women, we need to come together and help each other in doing that and support each other. Women can be the harshest on each other. It's horrific. And when you go out on social media, it's, it's horrific. Yeah. So we I noticed, I, I even post about this. I noticed my female guests get, really horrible and initially it used yeah. to trigger me at delete them yeah and then in speaking to them they said oh if you do that <laughs> yeah you'll be at it your whole life you know yeah. just let let it because it, it actually encourages them to do worse yeah. um what can women do to reconcile because one of the things i'm noticing is you look at your face and you can see those physical changes yeah. that we talked about oh, yeah. how can we love the new mm -hmm. woman that's emerging yeah oh it's such a good question so I think first, understand the process. So mm -hmm. this is why um, the menopause reset will help for sure. Um, eat like a girl. I've got a whole chapter for menopausal women in there on food. I have symptoms and how to match food to symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I think that will help just really understanding what you're going through. And then I'm right, my the most current book I'm writing right now that will be out next year is about the brain changes and how we are setting ourselves up for, in midlife or just through through, life? through menopause. Okay. So, so we can set ourselves up for cultural leadership when we get to the other side of menopause. So the first thing is if you understand yourself mm -hmm. and what's going on in your body, you will stop hating yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of my message is really helping women understand how powerful they are that you, there isn't a flaw in your design. Yeah, I, I interviewed somebody on my own podcast that said, um, well, the reason you don't feel great through menopause is because you weren't meant to live past menopause. Nothing's further from the truth. You're actually in preparation of the best version of you yet. So in that preparation of the best version of you, as that neurochemical armor is coming down, if traumas that you haven't, haven't healed come up, do breath work, go see a therapist. I mean, I've been last couple of running away from them. Yeah, don't run away. It's like, there's, there's this gift for the last two years. I've been in therapy with an EMDR specialist. I have a breath worker that I use that I work with on a semi-regular basis. Cause I'm like, as this armor came down, the things that were traumatic in my life that are triggering me and, and, and affecting my my overall behaviors need to be dealt with. Those are my those are mine. You can't run away from. You can't right? run away from them. Yeah. So I, I always thought put a happy sticker on it. Yeah. And just move on. But I'm finding it's on the days when I do that. Yeah. I can't do anything when I try to pretend. Okay. When I'm thinking, oh, that I used to be able to. I used to be able to. I realize that self isn't there anymore. Right. That's right. But and so. There, there's wisdom of life. You're exhausted trying to keep the armor up and not ruffle anybody's feathers. So there's an exhaustion to that. But then there's a brain change that's moving from I 
to more of a societal, like seeing things from a bigger picture. So that I like, I care about what you think of me is going away. And so that can be scary because you're kind of gripping on to this idea of like, but wait, I used to care what I thought people thought of me. And then you realize like, I put so much energy into caring what people think of me. So that I didn't even have time to feel it. That's right. Yeah. There, you know, one of the, and I'm going to talk about this from stage today, but one of the things I've been really researching is what's the difference between a patriarchal society and a matriarchal society? We live in a patriarchal society. And when I say patriarch, everybody seems to think that's men. I'm not saying there's some amazing men out there that are so supportive. Especially now. Yeah, especially now. Like the, the men that are emerging are incredible and they're so they're supportive. Curious. They're curious. They want to support. They don't, especially if they have women in their lives that are suffering, they want to know how to, how to help. So I like patriarch as power over. A patriarchal society has power over you. I don't know what the healthcare system. I love that definition. Right. I, I don't know what the healthcare system is like here in England, but I can tell you in America, it's a one that has power over women. It gaslights women. It gives women prescriptions that it gives men. It, does, it you know most uh, in in the U.S. most doctors like over seventy percent of them don't even know anything about menopausal symptoms. So that's a power over a matriarchal society, which I had to go back like thousands of years to find some historical examples of really effective matriarchal societies. And one of the best definitions I found is that it actually is power from within. So if you look at this transition. That definition is transformative because we, we make it about the sexes. Yeah. The power of the sexes. That's right. That. That's right. Power over. That's right. Versus. That's right. Power together. Yes. And power together. Because everybody's going within to find their own power. So when you ask, well, how do I navigate this and reconnect myself? If you've been living in a world where you were seeing the injustice and feeling and you're exhausted from the power over, guess what? Menopause, perimenopause is your training to bring out the power within. So you feel crazy because you can no longer participate in this structure that has had a power over you. So what changes can we make to make this time a time for us to thrive? Yeah. So there's five changes I recommend to make this really usable for people. Um, the first is learning to fast. So, okay. uh, and, and the reason for this is that the female brain actually starts to prefer ketones over glucose mm -hmm. as you go through menopause. So you become, your brain becomes less sticky and, and um, it can grab onto glucose less efficiently and does really well with ketones. And the best way to keep to get ketones is to start to learn to intermittent fast. Well, you've written a lot of books and I think you yeah. have resources on that, which we will link to. Yeah. Um, fasting, other things. Yeah. Well, I like fasting to get ketones. I like the ketogenic diet, but I think it's always sometimes it goes too low carb, mm -hmm. um, which actually leads me to the second lifestyle change, which is learning how to vacillate from low carb to high carb. Ooh, and the, I love that you're not right, saying no carbs. Right? Yes. Okay, so this is how I actually started to, my whole YouTube channel was birthed out of this idea that so many women were fasting and doing keto like a man. And they were losing weight, but they were losing their hair and they were losing their that menstrual was cycle. Me. Yep. And iron and all yep. of that. Yeah. Because they didn't learn how to how to how to cycle carbs, basically. So your YouTube channel has a lot of resources yeah. on that. We have you for a short time. We'll yeah, try yeah. and convince you back. Yeah. So the third thing we can do. Uh, third thing is you gotta start looking at toxins. So this is why the anti-aging needs to be natural. When you're putting toxic chemicals on your face, your hair, uh, the fillers, the Botox, all of that, women put on over 200 chemicals on their body every single day that are endocrine disruptors. So your hormones are going to go on a wild ride if you're not careful about the toxins you put on in your skin. So you wouldn't recommend Botox? I think it's a personal decision, but I will tell you the reason I haven't done it is because it's a toxic load. It's another toxin. It's a poison mm -hmm. going into my system. Mm -hmm. And that poison, we have not studied on what it's doing to our hormones or and to the family. take it off. Right. right. Yeah. 
So for me, not something I'm willing to participate in. Mm -hmm. I understand the desire. Mm -hmm. I understand the pressure. Mm -hmm. There's many times I've wanted to, Mm -hmm. but my brain says, I always, here's what I do that I hope every woman does. I want to go back to your 105 year old friend. Yes. I think of myself at a hundred. Who do I want to be at a hundred? At a hundred, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care. I don't care if I have if I have wrinkles on at a hundred. But what's weird? When I saw her the other day, she you know you can imagine her upper lip is completely like cracked. Yeah. But there was such a beautiful, almost luminous quality to her skin yeah she looked like she could be wearing makeup or something and you realize that comes from somewhere else right how should we tap into our spirit yeah to what i agree i think i think so that's the other thing like if we continue and i'm not i'm not here to tell you to do botox or not do botox but what i can tell you when i look in the mirror at my face yeah I see my furrowed brow and I looked at that at these, what we call the 11s. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is because I've deeply thought about a lot of things in my life. And in my, I have an amazing husband who we've talked about this. I, I literally get just like you. Yeah. I get messages from women all the time online that tell me I should Botox. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to Botox because this is all the hours that I have spent mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. about the world's problems about how to empower women, how to make a difference, like spending hours reading, looking at research, it shows up on my face. My smile lines, I smile everywhere I go. My Around my mouth, I want to laugh. I, I want to enjoy. I want to have a connection with humans. Yeah. And if you don't see wrinkles on my face, how do you know what I've been through? How do you know what I'm thinking right now? Mm-hmm. I was interviewed by a woman, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, who was her face was completely frozen. Mm-hmm. And as I was talking to her, I kept thinking, I don't know if she's liking what I'm saying. I don't know. And I was there to serve her audience. Like, mm-hmm. I want to be just like right now. Like, you I can't want to read her. Too. I can't read her. I don't know if like, that's, not, that's not the goal. That's not the goal. The goal is to say, I have lived life. I am wise. I have something to contribute to the world. I think just your existence makes it easier for us. I think, it, you know, just like I always thought I had ideas of who I'll be at 30, who I'll be at 40. Right. I thought I would never care. At this yeah. age, I thought I wouldn't care at all. Yeah. But Society does have an effect. And sometimes I look, you know, I have them right here. Yeah. And I must be constantly raising my eyebrows at the world or something yeah. because it's frozen up here. Oh, my God. You look beautiful to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Not without the makeup. You know, have you ever, you know what, some of the things I'd love to do on your, in your social media, do you ever see those um, indigenous women? Yes. And they're like all of the wrinkles. I will yes. spend hours looking at those faces yeah. and realizing how beautiful. Oh, are. and like what stories can she tell me? Like, you know, I had somebody sent me um, one of my favorite authors wrote um, Women Who Run With the Wolves, uh, mm-hmm. Clarissa Estes P- uh, Pinkola. And she also wrote a book called The Power of the Crown. Of the Crown. Mm-hmm. And a friend recommended I, I read it. And I was like, I'm not a crone. What do you mean I'm a crone? She goes, no, Mindy, do you understand that the crone means your crown? And I was like, whoa. So let's put everything we've talked about into some context here. What if you knew at 40, this hormonal shift was happening yeah. and you had a game plan. So you do these five things. You're going to fast. You're going to cycle your carbs. You're going to detox. Um, the other one is what I call rushing woman syndrome, where you're going to learn to recover and nurture and rest a little more. Mm-hmm. And you're going to do these things. You decide how you want it, if you're going to Botox or not. But I, what I want people to women to understand is the goal is for you to come into your late 50s, early 60s, the best version of yourself. And by that, I don't mean looks. By that, I mean your brain, mm-hmm. because at the in your late 50s, early 60s is where our culture needs you. And as long as we are hiding, we are pretending we're not aging, we're, we're lashing out at each other, what's happening... We're not contributing and that vacuum boom. can be felt in the world. That's what boom. I'm thinking. It's so funny you say that because I realize at my most attractive, which people say is in your 20s and 30s, I didn't, I wasn't happier. Yeah. And so if you have a choice between obsessing about weight loss, obsessing about... You know, like now I'm going to be a bridesmaid for the first time. 
<laughs> and because I have younger Rats. friends. <laughs> yeah, right. That's amazing. And I'm just like, I've put on two dress sizes. Oh, yes. I was one of these women who was constantly complimented for being skinny once I moved to the UK. But wow. in, where I grew up in Africa, that was not beautiful. Wow. The more voluptuous, I think now oh. I would be considered beautiful, <laughs> but not, not when I was a skinny little girl. Amazing. Yeah, but it just meant when I came here, everyone was just obsessed with skinny, skinny, yep. skinny, skinny. And so every time you put on weight, it's really hard. I never thought that I would have this kind of thinking about fitting into society, but I can see now that I care less. Right. And right. it's disorienting people. It is. Yes. Me too. Are you? Yes. No, I've spent a lot of time really trying to explain to people who I am now. Okay. Because we introduce yes. yourself. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. How, we, how do you do that? Now? That would be, a, we need to have like when a woman hits that one year mark where she hasn't have, had a period, we need to have like a reintroduction party. Like where women, like a coming out party. We're like, this is the new version. And of should me. that be your 15s? Yeah. Because I, I could do that. Uh, the average age for women to go through menopause is like 49, 50. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you're saying once you feel like a new self has yeah. emerged, yeah. then really acquaint yourself with that self. Yeah, and own it. Own it. And then how do you tell people about this new version of you when they feel like, I don't recognize who you are? Yeah, you know, I can only say the way I've said it to people is like, um, I've been doing a lot of work on myself, is what I say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've been in therapy. I've been diving deep into who I am and how I want to show up. And so I'm different. Mm -hmm. And you might find me different, mm -hmm. but that's a good thing because yeah. I've been working personally on myself. I did this with my daughter who's 24 now. When she came back from college at about 21, 22, um, I actually asked her to relook at me. And I was like, I want you to understand that in the time you've been gone, I've been going, I've had a hormonal change. I've been working on myself. And so some of the old ways that you looked at me, you might not find me that way anymore. So I'm going to ask that you actually don't bring the past into this and you look at me with fresh eyes. And how did she? She yeah, heard it. She heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I modeled to her what she should do. I love this so much. Yeah. I could talk to her forever. <laughs> I am so honored yeah, to have thank you. you. Thank you so much. I oh, hope we'll be able you. to get to do this. Yeah, again. thank you. You know, and thank you for asking the right questions. Oh, thank and you. And your voice is very easy. You're yeah, saying knowledge of well. Your voice is needed. Don't you keep showing up authentically. So when people make any comments on you, don't let it sink in. We need more authentic leaders. Mm -hmm. So keep doing that. Thank you. Uh huh. My pleasure. Thank you.